Hello friends, the topic of this video is adductor canal which is also known as subsartorial canal or hunter's canal. You usually get a short note on adductor canal in your exams and the answer should be written under the following headings. Its location and extent, the boundaries, contents and the relevant applied or clinical aspects. You can also be asked to enumerate the contents of adductor canal. You always begin your answer with introduction. So let us see what is adductor canal and where it is located. Adductor canal, it is a narrow intermuscular canal. Intermuscular canal, that means its boundaries will be formed by the muscles. Where exactly it is located? As the name suggests, adductor. Adductor compartment of thigh is on the medial side of the thigh. So it will be present on the medial aspect of the thigh. Where exactly? Middle one third. So adductor canal is located on the medial one third of the medial aspect of thigh. Let us see its extent. Above, it is continuous with the femoral triangle at the apex of the femoral triangle. So this is its upper extent, that is apex of femoral triangle. The lower extent is uh, till this hiatus or opening in the adductor magnus muscle. So here we can see this is adductor mag magnus muscle which is inserted onto the uh, posterior aspect of the femur and where it is getting inserted right there we have some openings. Actually there are four more openings above that. This is the last opening and the largest opening that is the fifth opening. So this is the lower extent of the uh, adductor canal. Now, what is the main function of this adductor canal? It allows the passage of femoral vessels from femoral triangle to popliteal fossa. So we can see here the femoral vessels which first run in the femoral triangle and at the apex when the adductor canal begins, they will be passing through the adductor canal and then they will pass through the adductor hiatus and reach the posterior aspect that is the popliteal fossa. So here in this picture, we can also see here this funnel shape, this is femoral triangle and how it is continuous at its apex with the adductor canal. Let us look at the boundaries of adductor canal. When you see a cross section of adductor canal, you cut through that, it is triangular in nature. So therefore it will have three walls. So let us see those three walls, how they are formed. So anterolaterally, the wall will be formed by the vastus medialis. We can see this dotted line. This is the adductor canal. So this will be the anterolateral aspect. This is the medial aspect. So anterolaterally, it will be formed by vastus medialis. Anteromedially, the roof also we call it. This will be formed by the sartorius muscle. And beneath the sartorial muscles, we will have a plexus of nerves known as subsartorial plexus. And still deep to that, there will be a facial sheath. So if we start from deep to superficial, the anterior medial wall or roof will be formed by facial sheath over which lies the subsartorial plexus on which uh, lies the sartorius muscle. And that's why the name is subsartorial canal because it lies deep to the sartorius muscle. In the cross section, these three structures, they will become very clear. Then posteriorly, right, that is the floor will be formed by two muscles. Which are those two muscles? Adductor longus and adductor magnus. Let us look at the walls of adductor canal in a cross section. Now this is the lateral side. This is the medial side. This is here. This is the anterior aspect and this is the posterior aspect. The anterior aspect is divided into two parts, anterolateral and anteromedial. Anterolaterally, the wall is formed by vastus medialis. You can see this muscle inserted on the femur. Anteromedially, we have three structures which form anteromedial wall or you can say roof of the adductor canal. These are the sartorius muscle and then we have the subsartorial plexus and then we have the facial sheath here. So these are the three structures present in the roof or anteromedial wall, right? Because this canal is present beneath the sartorius muscle, that's why it is also known as subsartorial canal. Posteriorly, what do we have? We have the adductor longus muscle. 
Now, why we can see here only adductor longus and not adductor magnus? Because the section has been taken from upper part of the adductor canal where the floor or the posterior wall will be formed by adductor longus. If the section was taken from the lower part of the adductor canal, then we would have seen the adductor magnus muscle. Now, uh, let us talk about the subsartorial plexus which is present just beneath the sartorius muscle. So, this actually is formed by contribution from three nerves and these are the cephanous nerve which is cutaneous branch of femoral nerve, medial cutaneous nerve of thigh again a branch of femoral nerve and anterior division of obturator nerve. So, these nerves they form a plexus and they will supply the medial aspect of the thigh. Contents of adductor canal. I have already told you the main function of this canal is to allow passage to femoral vessels from the femoral triangle till the popliteal fossa. Popliteal fossa is located behind the knee joint. Now, first let us look at the artery, right? So, which artery will be uh, present in the adductor canal? Femoral artery. That is the main artery. It will give few muscular branches in the canal and another branch which will go down till the knee joint that is descending genicular artery. It is going to take participate in the anastomosis around the knee joint. Then vein, femoral vein will be passing through this. Then nerves. So, one nerve which you can see here, the longest cutaneous nerve, which is a branch of the posterior division of femoral nerve, that is cephanous nerve, that will be passing through this. Another nerve will be nerve to vastus medialis, which will supply vastus medialis here and the knee joint also. Then we will also have, which you cannot see in this diagram, vascular branch from the anterior division, which will supply femoral artery, and genicular branch from posterior division of obturator nerve, which will supply the knee joint. So we have here uh, branches or the nerves, three nerves, cephanous nerve, then nerve to vastus medialis, they are branches of femoral nerve. This is a muscular branch, cephanous nerve is a cutaneous branch and we have two branches from the obturator nerve also. One is the vascular branch and another is the genicular branch. So in total four nerves. So here we can see the contents now. So this is the femoral vein which you can see here. This is femoral artery and these are the two nerves can be seen. The two branches of obturator nerve have not been shown here. So these are the branches of femoral nerve, cephanous nerve, cutaneous nerve and the nerve to vastus medialis plus we will have two branches from obturator nerve. Now exit of contents. So once the uh, structures have entered into the um, adductor canal, mainly they will be entering through the apex of the femoral triangle. How do they leave? Femoral vessels, they are going to leave through opening in adductor hiatus, right? That is at the lower end and will enter the popliteal fossa. Cephanous nerve is going to leave by piercing the roof. And uh, it is cutaneous, so then it is going to run on medial aspect of the knee joint and then on the medial aspect of leg. Nerve to vastus medialis, this will end up by supplying the vastus medialis muscle. Coming to uh, applied aspect, right? Sometimes the ligation of femoral artery is needed. In which case? In case of treatment of popliteal aneurysm. Aneurysm, you know that ballooning of the walls of the artery that condition is known as aneurysm so in case of treatment of popliteal aneurysm the femoral artery has to be ligated and this can be done easily in the adductor canal right because it is easy to approach and ligate the femoral artery in adductor canal so here Following ligation of femoral artery, how the blood is going to reach now popliteal artery? It can reach popliteal artery through the anastomotic channels around the knee. And this was first described in 18th century by John Hunter and that's why this canal is also known as Hunter's Canal. So here what has to be done along the medial border of sartorius incision is given in the skin. The muscle will be retracted, the facial sheath will be cut and the femoral artery can be ligated there. Adductor canal nerve block. Let us see which nerve can be blocked here. 
it is saphenous nerve so local anesthetic that can be administered in the adductor canal to block the saphenous nerve now when it is done the saphenous nerve block this is useful as a supplement to sciatic nerve block for surgical procedures to be performed on foot and ankle and why is it so because saphenous nerve that supplies skin on medial aspect of the leg down to the ankle and foot so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again